Hello, everyone. Welcome to Stats One. I'm going to just wait a couple minutes. I'm going to take attendance, maybe, if I can. And um, I'll just wait a couple minutes and let people get in. Looks like we've got a good, a good amount of people, but we'll just give everyone a minute. Okay. All right. So I took attendance real quick. So welcome to Stats One. How's everyone's day going so far? Good. Thumbs up. Awesome. All right. So let's go over a little bit about the Zoom and then I'll tell you about myself and we'll go over the syllabus and stuff and then we'll cover some material. Um, so on Zoom here, if you look at your screen, you can go to reactions on the bottom and it gives you the option for like a thumbs up. You could always do that. Like if I'm asking you a question and you wanna respond, um, you could do that. If you go to the more button, uh, wait a minute, maybe it's not more, maybe it's participants. Um, there you can you know, click yes or no and, and some things in there. So feel free to use those buttons or feel free to turn your video on or, um, your audio on and you can respond verbally, that's fine. I want you to feel comfortable with this so you do not have to have your audio on at all during the class if you don't want and you don't have to have your video on. So it's up to you, um, it doesn't matter to me. Although I like to see your faces, but it's up to you, okay? I want you to feel comfortable with whatever, whatever it is, okay? Um, so anyways, that's a little bit with the Zoom. So like today you'll see how it's gonna run. I'll just, um, I'll have my video on a little bit and then I'm gonna use a document camera and I'm gonna hand write out my notes as if I was in class and um, writing on the board, okay? So I'm gonna do the same idea. So hopefully it looks like everyone's found the link and the passcode. So it's in the Zoom section of my courses. It's on the calendar and I put it on that announcements page. So hopefully everything is very easy to find. Now, you will notice that this class was originally going to be in person and it switched to online. So it's sections, right? It's like 
you might be 145, 10, section one, right? S1 or S2 or S3. So when you're looking at my courses, you will see it will have just 145.10 by itself. That's gonna be like the parent course. And then you have like little sections. So then you'll also see 145.10 S1, if that's the section you signed up for. Now that it's all online, the, the registrar just was so overwhelmed they could not fix that and get that changed, which is fine. Just so you know, I'm only going to use the 145.10 My Courses page. I won't use the individual sections, okay? I do have a little note on there saying, look to the main section and then you'll see everything there. So just so you know about that. All right, so I'm Professor Graff. I've been teaching at RIT for a while now. I don't like to say how long it ages me, but um, for a long time actually. I actually went to school at RIT. I got my master's in applied math there. So I know what it's like to be a student. I know how difficult the school is. I know, um, you know the expectations that are on you. So I, I get how you guys are feeling when you get really stressed out. I totally get it. Um, so I did my master's, like I said, in applied math, but my uh, research was in queuing theory, which has a background of statistics. So that's where I'm at. I do also teach um, some math courses as well. I don't just teach stats. It's just this semester, I'm teaching five classes of stats one. All right, so when you email me um, and you say, oh, I've got a question, you need to tell me what class you're in. So then I know because I have 180 students. So I want to make sure I have everyone in the right place. And since I'm not seeing you face to face, it's really hard for me to remember who's in what class. Um, so just if you email me to say, oh, I'm in Monday, Wednesday, Friday at your noon class, or you could say section 10, just then I know, I know where you're at. Okay. Uh, what class? Yeah. Okay. So I think it's better that this is online. I know some of us really want to be in person. Like, trust me, I do. I love being in person. I think it would be really hard. You would only be in person one day anyways and masks. And I just, I feel like this is, I think we're gonna get a better experience. Although it's gonna be a little tricky with all the, the technology too. I'm trying to figure it all out. All right. So what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna pull up the syllabus for our class and, um, what I want to do here, hopefully I didn't, okay. Um, I wanna grab that and I'm gonna pull it up for us. I'm gonna share my, my screen with you and we'll go over that real quick. I should have downloaded it before, but I did not. So <laughs> I gotta just wait a minute for me to get it. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen with you and we can look at this together. So the syllabus you'll be able to find on my courses, it is, um, let's see, it's on my courses under content, and then it will say stats one and then syllabus. If you look, it's the only thing out there right now because I don't have anything out there yet since we just are starting. So you'll find that there. All right. So you will report to class. Monday, Wednesday, Friday at the same Zoom link, uh, same time, 1220, um, you know, all semester long. All right, so here's some information about uh, my, like, my office and everything. So you won't find me in my office because I am, well, I am, I am on campus on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I won't be holding office hours in person. They'll all be virtual. That's what the school really directed us to. Um, since our offices can't really accommodate social distancing properly. So all my office hours are virtual. If you tried to jump on my morning office hour, I was having some technical issues and my link wasn't working, but I think I got it figured out. So from 10 to 11 on Monday and Wednesday, I'll have an office hour and Thursday and Friday, 1230 to 1.30. If those times don't work for you and you need to speak with me, just email me, we'll set up an appointment, okay? We'll set up a time that works for both of us. So, um, you know, don't hesitate to do that. So here's my email listed. Our textbook, we're gonna use the Sullivan 5th edition. You do not need to buy the hard copy of the textbook. 
Um, you do need to buy the access code for my math lab or my stat lab, it's all the same thing. And when you purchase that code, you will get an ebook. Okay, so it's a lot cheaper than buying a hard copy. If you want the hard copy because you like to have a physical book in front of you, that's fine, then do it. That's probably like a $260 option where the code ranges from like $80 to like $140. So um, they've changed some things with this. I've received some questions since last week of sending my email out. It looks like the code that you wanna buy if you're only taking step one with me um, would be the $80 option, which is good. It's cheaper than it was previous years. So it's $80, gives you the ebook, it gives you the, the MyStat Lab, which is the homework, uh, access for 18 weeks, the course is 14 weeks, and then, you know, the final exam stuff. So that gives you plenty of time for the whole semester. Um, so that's perfectly, uh, you know, good option for those of you who are just taking STAT 1. Now, if you're taking STAT 2, you may want to consider purchasing the $115 option. That one comes with like two years now. It used to only be two semesters. Now it's like two years of, um, so it would be four semesters of access, then that way, if you're taking stat two and the professor's using the same book, you have that access and you don't have to buy it all over again. So it's just something to think about um, before you purchase them. I'll show you where to purchase um, that code on uh, my courses here in just a minute. The technology we're using, I used to ask everyone to buy um, or have or borrow or something a graphing calculator. I'm not doing that this semester, I'm changing it up. So we have some options. We do need some sort of technology. So a graphing calculator is one option. Minitab, Jump, or Excel, those are the other options. I just want you to know that I know the calculator and I know Minitab. Jump, I've never looked at before, although I'm, I'm certain it's pretty similar to Minitab. And Excel, I used to use all the time, and I just have not used that in years. So not much help, although I could probably figure it out. I'm just not much help. Um, so I will give you instructions for like the calculator and Minitab. Minitab 19 is free since you're an RIT student. All you would need to do is Google RIT, Minitab 19, and a site will pop up for the ITS, so for the information and technology services, and you can just download it on your computer. You wouldn't do the trial, it would just be the version of, you know, the full-on version, so it's not like the 30-day trial. You don't need a code or anything, you just click, keep clicking OK and you get it. Um, Minitab 19 has two separate versions, one for a PC and one for a Mac. So just make sure you choose the correct one for your computer. So those are your options for technology. We will be using the technology in class sometimes and we absolutely need it for the exams. So I don't, I will show you calculations and I will talk about the calculations, but we won't be using by hand calculations throughout the course. Like we'll do something once by hand and then that's it. I just want you to see how it's done and then we're going to use technology, which makes sense because that's really what we would do in life, right? So if we have technology, we're gonna use it. So that's same here in this class, okay? All right, any questions so far on that? For the book or the technology stuff? If you don't wanna ask, it's fine. You can ask me after if you don't wanna ask in class. I do also wanna mention real quick on the Zoom, there's like a chat feature. I can't look at the chat and um, talk and write notes and everything at the same time. So just so you know, if you're in the chat and you're asking me a question, I'm not going to see it. I, I will try to take a look at the end of class and answer anything. But if you have a question, you're better off like using the raise your hand and then unmuting yourself when I ask you. Or if you don't want to do that, like I said, you can always ask me after class. But I, I won't be in the chat. Someone else in the class might be able to help you. Like if you say, what did she say for that? And they might be able to help you out. All right. That was like a little side note. Okay, so my att I take attendance every day. Um, I wanna make sure you're here and you're paying attention. The only way for you to learn the material is to get it from me and that's attending class, right? So attendance is not going to hurt you in the way that it's like part of your grade, it's not. I took that out for this semester because I know people are gonna have circumstances that they can't control. So I removed that 
But just so you know, I will keep track. And if you are missing a lot of class, I will send out an early alert or I'll email you and say, hey, what's going on? <laughs> so keep me informed, okay, if you have to miss class. I'm gonna do anything I can to help you and uh, you know, give you all the information. Whoops, that was too much. There we go. Okay, homework. So like I said, homework is on my stat lab. You're going to have multiple assignments each week. So the assignments will be assigned every Monday morning at 8 a.m. And then they're due the following Monday night at 11.59 p.m., so midnight. Um, there's going to be an assignment for each section of the chapter I cover. So some days I cover two sections. So some lectures will have two homework assignments. But I want you to know in a week, the homework should still only take you about an hour. It, even if you have three homework assignments for the one week, it should only be an hour. Maybe one is like five questions, another one's 15. So I'm not trying to overwhelm you. I'm just trying to let you know, like that's not to be surprised if it looks like a lot of homework assignments. So you should have one for chapter one this week because we're going to do that this week. So that will be open. Um, the first homework assignment, I do delay the due date by one week. So it won't be due this upcoming Monday, but it will be due the following Monday uh, in two weeks. And then you'll have this week's assignments and next week's assignments. I just give you guys that extra time for that first week. So if anyone's having trouble signing in, getting an access code, or if they're waiting for financial aid or something like that, then you don't have to feel that pressure. Um, you know, and I just, so I just give you some time to get it figured out, all right? You can do uh, homework late, you can. I will accept it. It's just automatically in the system set up so it's 10% off each day that it is late. So uh, just know that it's, it's accepted, but it will be discounted, your grade for that, okay? Your homework uh, counts as 10% of your overall grade. So please don't be that one student that I always get every semester that says, I'm not gonna do the homework or I'm not gonna buy the access code because then you're like an A student but I have to give you a B because you've dropped 10 points off your overall grade. Please don't be that student. <laughs> I hate doing that, but um, that's how I have it set up. I want it 10% of the grade, all right? So reach out to me if you're having trouble. If you, um, if you can't buy the code right away, there's like a 14 day little trial you can uh, sign up for it, and then you can extend it into the full version when you can pay for it. So, you know, there's some options there for us. All right, so class on Monday is generally going to start with a quiz. It's a little like three minute quiz. I will have it set up so it turns on right at 1220 and it turns off at 1225. So I will give you five minutes, although it's like a three minute quiz. It's open notes, open book. Um, it's going to be a little like one or two question, or yeah, one or two question quiz that is based on the previous week's material. It's going to be an easy quiz. I'm not a tricky professor, I'm not here to trick you. I want to make sure that you're attending class and paying attention and getting the material. So it's really meant for multiple things, for me to know who is coming and paying attention and who is not. And it's also to give yourself a check. So if you start bombing all these quizzes, then you might say, you know what, I'm, I'm having problems. I'm not understanding the material or I'm not attending class often enough and I'm not getting enough of the material. I can't pass these quizzes. I better get some help, right? So it does, it does those both. Um, and I do drop the lowest two quizzes. I don't do makeups. So if you miss it, then you miss it. It's not a big deal. It'll be dropped and just, you know, make sure you make all the others, okay? Not the end of the world. Those are also 10% of your grade. Now I have, um, uh, let's see, someone, Chris, did you raise your hand, Christopher? Yeah, um, I have a quick, so I assume then this upcoming Monday we will have a quiz? Yes, okay. I will put a quiz out there. Yep, it'll be on chapter one. Trust me, it's gonna be simple. It won't be hard, nothing tricky. And again, open notes, open book, yep. All right, thank you for asking. So um, if you got my email before, like a week ago, I sent out like a little survey, and if you took that survey, you would know that I do team activities with our class. 
So what I do is I set you up in teams. It depends how many is in the class, three to four um, students in a team. And the team works together on these activities. These activities um, help with the class. It adds to the learning of the class. So there might be vocabulary words or maybe something I didn't quite do in class. And it's something for you guys to work together and figure out. Of course, I will be there to answer questions. It's not to trick you. It's nothing bad. It's just, it's nice to have something else and something extra rather than me just talking to you the entire time, right? That we're in class. I would do this if we were in person. Um, so I'll set up the teams. And what we're gonna do is on Fridays, we will work in teams and Monday and Wednesday, I will lecture. Sometimes I have a short lecture, like on a Monday or a Wednesday, and we might have 20 minutes and we might get together with our teams for a few minutes and start working on the team assignments. You're going to notice that there's one assignment per lecture. So it kind of goes right together, like today's lecture one. So on Friday, we're gonna have team assignment one. Fridays is a very short assignment. Friday's really meant for you to get to know your teammates and uh, figure out you know, your roles and what you expect from each other and all that stuff, okay? Um, <clears throat> sorry, I got a tickle in my throat. So here, um, I do drop a couple of the lowest ones. So again, if you miss because you're ill or, you know, whatever reason, you have a sports event you need to go to or you have something going on at home and you need to go to it, it's not the end of the world. And I want you to realize, um, you know, I will give you these and I'll say, yes, work on it at home. I would rather you do it than not do it. But if you can't do it, then just know I drop a couple of the lowest grades, okay? I try to be flexible. All right, so for exams, we have a couple exams. We have two during the semester, and then we have a final exam. Each of the exams are 20%, even the final exam, so 60%. So when you are in class and you're like, I, I didn't really get what she meant, I don't understand you know, what that is or the definition of that or, or when we use that, I would really love it if you ask me right away. And I get it if you don't wanna ask in class, but maybe ask like right after class, like I'll stay on pie for five minutes after class and answer any questions or ask during an office hour or email me if you're really shy about it because I don't want you to fall behind because if you like, if you didn't understand something from two weeks ago and it keeps building, then you have so many questions and then you're behind and then it's overwhelming. And I just don't want that for you guys, right? So ask when you have a question, don't be shy. There's no question that is stupid. I want everyone, I want it to just be very clear and open, okay? So do not feel that way with me. All right, so my grading, you can see the breakdown of everything, which we already talked about. I don't think I mentioned the team activity is 20%. We wanna make sure we're active with that. The final grading scale, that's the school's scale, so that's not mine. Um, and then there's outside help. So in uh, Gosnell, the first floor has all the windows in the front of the building. There's um, some free tutoring there. That's the Bates Study Center. Um, it's just free walk-in tutoring. Though I do recommend if you're going for stats to find out when a stats person is there because it's math and not every math person knows stats. So, um, but they're great, very helpful. And sometimes it's peer tutors, so some students, maybe some grad students, and there's sometimes there's professors. There's also a study center in Seoul, same idea. It's free, walk-in, no appointment needed. And then there is an academic support center, and it says Monroe Hall. I don't know, is that part of SAU? I think it is. Maybe that is SAU. I don't even know. So there's an academic support center. They're very helpful. That is more professional, like tutoring, so it's professors and they kind of test you and see your levels and they try to figure out where you need help. And there's NTID support down in the basement of Gosnell. Okay, so there's tons of places to get help. Of course, I love when you guys come to see me or, you know, chat with me, email me. You will see our tentative schedule here. So like today, lecture one, I'm gonna cover chapter one. And then on Friday, we have team assignment one. And I will show you on my courses where you're going to submit that and talk about that a little bit. So you'll see the breakdown, how I would like to run the class. Obviously, it may change. If it does, I'll let you know. I try to stick to the schedule as much as possible. 
you're going to see in week five, we have an exam, right? It says exam one review and exam one. So during week five, Monday and Wednesday, we will review for the exam both days, individually and with our team. Then on Friday, we will have the exam all online. Okay. So we'll do that for all the exams, even the final exam. All right, so take a look at all that stuff. Of course, I have the ADA statement and the integrity statement. I want to make sure that everyone's who they say they are and that their thoughts and ideas are their own. We want to make sure we're honest. Okay, so that is our syllabus. Anyone have any questions with that? We're on that. No questions? Okay, so I'm going to share my screen again and I'm going to look at my courses and we'll just chat about this for a minute. All right, so here's our class. Let me just go right to the home page. So here I put this right up here, the little welcome. Um, if you go to content, which is my first tab, then you will see right here the syllabus. You can click on it and then it has other things. Um, a lot of stuff's hidden because it's mine or associated with the class or I just don't have it yet. But you will see anything like team assignments um, will be in here. There's going to be different folders that I will open up as we need them. Okay, so that's where you're going to find team assignments. On the calendar, I also have like my office hours with the Zoom um, links and I have like my class meeting times and stuff. Now, I don't think you see some of these other ones. Like I think you guys just see this dark olive green that I have, which would be our class, which I got to figure out why it's in there twice. So I'll probably try to remove one of those and like office hours. Okay. So that should have all the Zoom information. There's a chat feature on my courses. I don't really use it often. I'm not just sitting in the chat. So if you want to chat with me on that and like you don't want to just keep emailing back and forth, just let me know. Send me an email and say, hey, can we chat today at two using the chat in my courses? It's fine. Then I'll be there. It's just I'm not sitting around on the chat waiting for people to come in and ask me questions. So you definitely have to alert me of that and set up kind of a time. All right. So when we're doing assignments and teamwork, you will be submitting your teamwork. Now each team will submit one paper and you're gonna see these little drop boxes. So it says team assignment one for week one. And you'll see like next week, team assignment two and three for week two, okay? So one person will out of the group will submit it for the entire group. I suggest, excuse me, I suggest that, um, that like you each take turns. Maybe one person does, assignment one and a different person does assignment two and three and so on. So then when it comes down to the exam, you've already submitted an assignment to a Dropbox and you know what it looks like and you know how to do it. Um, so it's not questionable when an exam rolls around and we have to do that. Okay, so that would be my, my suggestion. Our quizzes on uh, Mondays will be right here under the quiz tab. It will pop up. It will say quizzes. It's like down at the bottom on mine. It will say quizzes and it will say like quiz one and it will pop up on your calendar because it will say you have quiz one due at 12 25 on monday okay so it will pop up you'll get a, like a little reminder but just know you can go right in there right right before class and do that so you can join the zoom then join in to the quiz or you could just go right into your quiz and then join Zoom. If you join Zoom first, you're probably gonna hear me say at 1220, oh, remember you have the quiz, go in and jump in and do that real quick. Um, so I just want you to know it's, that's out there, okay? And of course, I'm gonna update all of your grades and everything. So let's go back to the homepage because I wanna show you this. Right here on the homepage to the right, it says My Lab and Mastering and it says Pearson. Right there's your My Stat Lab. That's where you're gonna go. So if you click that button, I can't do it for you because it takes me someplace different because I'm the professor. But when you click on that, it's gonna ask you to sign in, make an account. You will do that. Then it will ask you for your access code. And if you don't have an access code, you can purchase one there. That's where you're gonna choose like the $80 option or the $115 option. Now, if you already purchased it through Barnes and Noble, that's fine. You will have the access code and you can enter it there. 
what this does is this links your account to my class and it will link you right to my grade book. So your homework grades will automatically feed into this grade book instantly. So you might work on a homework next week and only do half of it and it'd be like 50%, right? So you're gonna see your grade come in there as 50% because only 50% is done. Don't worry about it, it will keep updating. Um, but that's just how it works. So it's just all of the time. So that's why I do it this way instead of giving you a course ID. The course ID means I have to go in and then manually transfer the, um, all the grades and it's not even a transfer, I have to type them in. So this is just better for everyone because then you can, you can see it right in your grade book. Okay. Are there any questions on any of that so far? No questions, I don't see any hands being raised. Okay, so I'm going to connect my document camera right here. And I really apologize, my handwriting is awful. I'm going to work on it with this document camera and everything as best as I can. Um, so I will do what I can for this. Okay. All right, so today we're going to, let me see, it's not even focusing. There it is. Okay, maybe. Okay, so there it is. All right, so today we're gonna to start with chapter one. So um, in chapter one, it's really called data collection, although we're not going to collect data, it's really more like data information. All right, so chapter one, data collection. If you guys notice I'm writing and you can't see something because I need to move the paper, just let me know. You could just unmute yourself and say, hey, can you move the paper up? <laughs> because sometimes I'm not looking at the computer. All right, so I really have to move this over first. Okay. All right, there it is. So first I'm going to start with the definition of statistics because we need to know why we're here. Why are we in this class, okay? So statistics is the science of collecting organizing summarizing and analyzing, whoops, information to draw conclusions. All right, so that is statistics. So like I mentioned, we're not really going to do the collecting portion of this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to organize the data. We're going to learn how to summarize it and analyze it and how to make conclusions. We'll be, we'll start making conclusions like right away next week. Um, but the real drawing conclusions comes back, comes way at the end of chapter nine and chapter 10. Uh, and it will all start coming together. We'll all pull together there. Okay. All right. So in statistics, we study a population, which is the entire group. And an individual is one person from that group and a sample is a subset of that group. So let's just see what an example of this would be. So for example, our population might be the entire class, our entire class. and an individual will be one of you. Then a sample is just a subset. So that might be everyone
who is wearing red today. That would be a sample, okay? It's a subset of my population. Okay? So we're gonna look at population, individual, and sample from now through the rest of the semester. And if you go on to take steps two, all of them do. So I will keep referring back to the population or an individual or a sample. A lot of times we talk about sample and population all the time, okay? Um, so it's good just to know some of these definitions and like what we're looking at and what we're studying, okay? So when we're in stats one here, we need to learn some types of data, okay? And we're going to use this again throughout the entire class. Whoops, forgot my key here. Types of data. So for the types of data, um, we're going to uh, talk about two different types of data that we have. Sorry, that looks really messy. I'm going to rewrite that. I'm going to give you an, an example though, or a task that I want you to do. So I want you to think about why you are in this class. Um, and I want you to write just a single sentence explaining why you're taking step one right now. It might be because you're actually interested in stats. It might be because your advisor told you because your major calls for it. Uh, but just take about 30 seconds and do that. And uh, we'll, we'll talk here in a minute. Okay, so with your sentence, I want you just to take a look. You're not going to share the sentence with me. You're not going to tell me. You're not going to show it to me or anything. It's just for a task here. So um, I want you to look at your sentence. And for each word in your sentence, I want you to assign a number. So count how many letters are in each word. So some letters have one, or some words have one letter, some have three, some have five, some have ten, something like that. I'm going to start writing the next thing while you do that. So the next thing I'm going to talk about before we get to the type of data is a variable. A variable is a characteristic. Whose value changes. from one individual to another. So now go back and look at your sentence. And you have all these words, they have different values associated with them. That's my variable, right? It's changing from word to word. The number of letters in each word changes from each word. Right? My words, my individual. So that's just a little example to kind of visualize what's going on here. All right. And when we're looking at this example or this task, and we have um, the different words, and they have different um, values, right? It's going to be one, two, three, four. So this is numerical, right? So when we have numerical data, that is one type of data. I'm going to change my colors up a little bit. So here, my one type of data is going to be numerical. And numerical data is also called quantitative data. So I'm going to put in parentheses. So numerical or quantitative data, it's a quantity, it's a meaningful number, okay? So, um, I want to just write that down. And within numerical data, sorry, this keeps getting crooked. I'll have to change my camera later. Okay, so within numerical data, I have two ways to categorize numerical data. Okay, so the first way is 
with discrete, which is like the example we just talked about. So discrete data is called finite data. And this is countable. What this means is I can have separate points. On a number line. I'm going to draw this out for you. So I might have one here and two and three, right? It's countable like that. So that's like the example we just had with the number of letters in each word. That's discrete, it's finite. You can actually count it. I feel like my camera is out of focus today or this afternoon, it wasn't this morning, so I apologize. Okay, so that's one type of numerical data. The other type of numerical data, I'm gonna get a different color, I just feel like being colorful this afternoon, <laughs> a different color, and this is going to be continuous. So we have continuous data, or it's infinite. So this is not countable, meaning you can't just separate the points on a number line. I'm gonna write it out and then I'll show you um, on the number line what that looks like. So here it's not possible. To separate all the possible values. into separate points on the number line. I wanna write this a different way. I don't like how it has possible twice and separate twice. <laughs> it's like confusing. Okay, but all it means is that I can't take my number line and have one, two, and three. What it means is, I'm gonna pull this up here. What it means is that maybe I have one here, right? I'm gonna put it as points, like a little dot. Then I have maybe 0.9999 right here. Or to the right of it, right after, I might have 1.00001, right? And what happens is all these points are just connecting and that's my continuous data. So they're not separated out. All the points just touch one another, okay? That's continuous. This is usually like a measurement. So for example, what if I'm looking here and I say, okay, I wanna measure the length of this statement. Not it's not possible to separate all possible values into separate points on the number line, okay? So maybe I'm gonna say, well, if I wrote this all out in a straight line, maybe it'd be 24 inches, right? But it's not just 24 inches. It might be 24.025679, Nine inches, right? That's what I mean. It's not just one or like two or 1.5 even, you know? It's really stretching it out and really going in depth. So another example is maybe how many feet is it to from your front door all the way to the road, right? So, or even inches. So you, you're going to have a length, but you could keep going smaller and smaller and smaller into that measurement, right? That's my continuous data. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Of course, if you guys have any questions, let me know as I'm chatting here. Okay. All right, the other type of data. So we said, okay, we have two types of data. One is numerical data and that's quantitative. And the other one is called categorical data. Let me change my color here. So this is categorical. And categorical data is also called qualitative. And what qualitative data is, it's just a quality that someone has. So numerical is a number, categorical is a category someone fits in or quality someone has, okay? Um, so this is just a category someone can be classified into. So 
here, we'll say it's a classification. Got five minutes left in the clock. I can see this here of individuals. based on some or on a characteristic. So here, maybe like before when I was talking about the example of like what color people are wearing, right? I can, I can categorize someone by what color shirt they're wearing or maybe by their hair color, right? So I can say, oh, you're gonna fit in this category, like my hair's kind of blondish. So I would fit in that category. Someone else might have black hair, someone else might, well, have brown hair or someone else might have red hair or green hair, right? And I can separate everyone into categories that way. That's categorical. It has nothing to do with a number. Okay. So that's my qualitative. Sometimes we can look at qualitative as like a yes, no type question. So for example, here, I might say, does the sentence have correct grammar, okay? And the answer to that is either gonna be a yes or a no, right? So that is still categorical because it's either, it fits in the category of yes or it fits in the category of no, right? So that's categorical. So what we're gonna do with our teams this week on Friday, we're going to have some different scenarios and different things that we can uh, figure out how to categorize these. And it just gets you used to it because we wanna be able to do it pretty quickly as we move forward with the class. And I know in the beginning, it's a little tough. It's not necessarily tough knowing if something's numerical or categorical, but when you look at numerical, is it discrete or continuous sometimes? It can be a little tricky and that's all right. We will get used to it. We will learn how to do that and it will work out just fine. All right, does anyone have any questions on that, on that stuff today? You can raise your hands, you can answer yes or no on the Zoom. You can always add something in the chat. I can look at that. I don't see anything in the chat. Anyone have any questions on any of that stuff? For anything at all? Yeah, I, hello? Yeah. Yeah, I missed this earlier, but is the, uh, are the exams going to be on the same site that the homework's going to be on, the person website? No, so the exams will actually just be on my courses. Okay. Yeah, so I will set up the multiple choice portion of the exam under a quiz, and then I will have um under like content i'll have a folder and we'll say exam one and it'll be like a download so you'll download like a word document and you could fill it in and then you're just going to upload that word document for me all right thank you yeah you're welcome i have a question yes if if i had the, if i had the textbook would i still need to like do the thing on my courses where i go into that website yes so if you bought the textbook brand new then it will come with the court the code to access the online homework. If you bought it used, then you will still need to buy the code. Mm, okay. Okay. Any other questions? Sorry, I just realized I still have this up. <laughs> Any other questions? No other questions? All right. Well, I hope you guys have a great day today. It was nice to meet everyone. If you have any questions for me, feel free to pop into like my office hours tomorrow, or you can send me an email. If you want to just chat about anything, if you have questions about anything. Um, if you have any questions, you want to stay after class, you know, you could always write straight in the, the chat, like, can we stay after class? Or you could just verbalize it to me. Can we just stay after class for five minutes and, and chat? But if no one has any questions, then and we're good for today. I hope you guys all have a great day. I hope you have a, a great first day of classes. Thank you. All right. So we go. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.
Bye. See you Friday. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Progressor, Progressor yeah. I just wanted to introduce myself. Um, you had my sister last semester, Elizabeth Ferrari. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she was telling me, she actually, she recommended that I take stats with you uh -huh. um, for this semester. Because, like, I took stats in high school. Um, okay. Like, AP stats. Because I talked to my pre-calc teacher actually taught um, stats, AP stats as well. And he's like, I asked him what math class I should take senior year, their calc or stats. He's like, well, what are you going into? And he said, business I think you froze for a minute or I froze one of us did uh oh you still there Christopher oh boy I think, I think we're good. Sorry, I don't know what happened. This happened with one of my other classes this morning. It just, I like lost, I don't know, communication. That's all right. So yeah. So okay, yeah. So I heard you say that you asked them what you should take. And I took stats because I'm like, all right, that makes sense. And then doing the RIT math placement exam, it just seemed all more calc based. Um, that was just my opinion of it. Um, cause I didn't like all the stuff seem more calc cause I had done stats for the entire year. So I would have known what it would have looked like. So it looked all calc based. Um, so, but stats is not, math is not really a strong suit for me. Okay. Um, especially stats. Like, I mean, he, he was a good, he was like the person who was like, he was a great person, but his teaching was like, you know, eh. Okay. So, um, and I, Elizabeth said like, you the way they teach stats here is like totally different from the way like AP style it stats is taught. Is. Yeah. So I'll I'll probably be at your office hour, office hours pretty consistently because okay. just, like last year that's like it was hard for um like it was hard in high school really just trying to get help for like classes and stuff because everyone's schedule is so like jam packed. Yes. So it, it, stats was just like and we had to do like a final project and even some of the big the basic stuff the way he would explain it his like his notes weren't really handwritten they were more just like whatever book we used like it came with a powerpoint so that's what he used oh, okay. and I don't learn too well that way yeah. with like prepared yeah. like powerpoints and like that if yeah. he, he just kind of like read off the screen which doesn't really do much for me so okay so, yeah. yeah yep well hopefully this is a better experience for you I think so I just like like my college algebra uh professor last semester like when we went on Zoom, she did, like, she had the, like, the fill-in-the-blank, like, worksheet stuff, so okay. she still did that, like, live, like, on her um, computer for Zoom, so, yeah, the handwritten stuff works, like, a lot better for me than just Yeah, the, like, well, because things. it's based on that class, and, right. you know, yeah, it's, it's more, like, right now, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Have a good day. All right, you too. Thank you. Thanks.